I remember hearing stories about people going inland in the fall and setting up camps to trap throughout the winter and hunt. Um, that was their means of survival. And I remember how hard it must have been for them. But also, you know, because of their connection to Pinesiwapikum, Sagaigan, we call it Weaver Lake. And that was our traditional territory. And it's a very spiritual place. It has uh, connections for many generations. There's uh, not many forests or land that hasn't been developed left. And to realize that they have something here that's worth their time to protect and to remember, there's still children coming that are not even here yet. That's how far we need to think about the responsibilities we have as people that are part of the land. So this is our last portage. As you can see, it is our last canoe. <laughs> it was a good trip. And then after this portage, we are in Weaver Lake. And we're getting pretty tired, yeah. <laughs> So I was going to put out the net this morning. We have this beautiful boreal forest with so much life on that land. The trees, you know, the, our belief that the trees have life, that those plants have life, and the rivers and the lakes have life. It's full of vibrant life that needs to be respected and understood by people who uh, will benefit from that land. My name is Clint Bitter from Poplar First Nation. I work as a lands guardian for Poplar River. This is muskeg, peat moss, monitoring. Well, with all the climate change and all, we are monitoring our, um, with all the forest fires that are going. That way we can monitor if we're gonna have a dry season or a wet season. And this is our second year doing this, so we won't know until we get all that data in with all these sites, and then we go from there. In Weaver Lake, we have a total of 11 sites. Working with Clint is good. I enjoy it. Kind of work be doing. I feel like it's above and beyond me, just as a person. I, it's important work. See if the forest is drying out. Just everything that's going on with the climate and stuff. 
go. Because you don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Too wet. And too wet. It's wet. This is where we are right now at 1845. So around, around this point, there's another big bay and we have three sites there. Are they gone back? No, no their food are hanging on the water. Nice <laughs> They're very um protective of their territory. They know the land so intimately. This is what they were given to, to live off from, and, and, and they took that, protecting it uh, very seriously. We need to protect that area because we have thunderbirds in that area, and the stories of thunderbirds, and maybe in Gweishiwak, you know, we need that protection. We try and take care of our sacred spots, even our old campsites, we still try and monitor everything closely. Going out there and monitoring all the uh, wildlife, fish, outsiders coming in and hunt our moose, especially landing and flying out with all the killings not letting popular First Nation be aware of them being out there. Who wouldn't want to be out here? <laughs> I love being out. I enjoy the outdoors with family, friends, especially with gatherings that we have out here. It's a good experience for everybody, especially the way that um, we were taught growing up is to respect the land. You know, it's not by accident. It's still untouched. You know, there's no development uh, that would disrupt the land. You know, the lakes and the rivers and just the ecosystem that's intact. We always uh, try to remember that saying uh, when the elder says, if you destroy the land around you, you we won't survive as people. The indigenous knowledge is still out there and it's still alive and it's really getting stronger. We are carrying something that's so important from many generations and will continue for many generations to come. <laughs>